Good morning. I'm Pastor Jeff Gausted, Interim Pastor of Mount Cross Lutheran. Our scripture reading for this first Wednesday in Easter is the gospel from this past Sunday, from the gospel according to Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They'd been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. We have many things we Christians can learn from one another. For our brothers and sisters in Christ of the Eastern Orthodox tradition, Easter is a time for holy humor. After the sober, somber seriousness of Lent, after the heaviness of Holy Week, Easter is a time to lighten up, to enjoy God's not-so-little joke. So here's one. Joseph of Arimathea was a very wealthy Pharisee, a member of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish ruling council, and he was a secret follower of Jesus. It was Joseph who went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body after the crucifixion. And it was Joseph who supplied the tomb for Jesus' burial. Well, it seems that someone pulled Joseph aside and said to him, Joseph, that was such a beautiful, costly, hand-hewn tomb. Why on earth would you give it to someone else to be buried in? Joseph just smiled and replied, replied, why not? He only needed it for the weekend. Christ's resurrection is God's joke on death and the devil, God's joke on all that would separate God from God's beloved creation. All the forces of death and evil must certainly have been surprised to find that the tomb and the bonds of death couldn't hold Jesus, the Son of God. In the Bible and in jokes, three often is an important number. Important things come in threes. Three establishes a pattern. Three is the number of completeness. We confess our belief in the three persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Peter denied Jesus three times, and Jesus often uses the number three in parables. And have you ever noticed that in many jokes, it's the third person who most often provides the punchline? Three fools die and find themselves at the pearly gates of heaven. St. Peter tells them that they can enter heaven if they can answer one simple question. So St. Peter asks the first fool, what is Easter? And the first fool replies, oh, that's easy. It's the holiday on the last Thursday of November when everybody gets together, eats turkeys, and is thankful. I'm sorry, that's wrong, Peter replies. Peter turns to the second fool and asks the same question, what is Easter? The second fool thinks for a moment and replies, oh, Easter. Easter's that holiday in December when you put up a nice tree, exchange presents, and celebrate the birthday of Jesus. Peter looks at the second fool and shakes his head in disbelief. No, I'm sorry, that's not right. So Peter turns to the third fool and asks, what is Easter? And the third fool smiles and looks St. Peter square in the eye. I know what Easter is, he says. Easter is the Christian holiday that coincides with the Jewish celebration of Passover. Jesus and his disciples ate the Last Supper, and later Jesus was betrayed and turned over to the Romans by one of his own disciples. The Romans took him to be crucified, made him wear a crown of thorns, hung him on a cross, and stabbed him in the side. 
He was buried in a nearby cave, which was sealed off by a large stone. St. Peter smiled, beaming with delight. The third fool continued, And every year the boulder is moved aside so that Jesus can come out, and if he sees his shadow, there will be six more weeks of winter. Yep, it's the third person who often provides the punchline. And on Easter, there's a different punchline, God's punchline. For when Jesus died, he wasn't just restored to life as we know it in the resurrection. His life completely changed. He was completely restored. Walls and doors couldn't keep Jesus out. The tomb couldn't hold him. The stone was rolled away from the entrance to the tomb, not so that Jesus could get out, but so the we disciples can see in. He's not there. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. So have you heard the one about the two Roman soldiers guarding the tomb? The stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. And the one guard says to another, Well, I guess now the only thing that's certain is taxes. So too for us. In our world, taxes are a certainty. And no joke, but just as certainly, or more certainly, in fact, for all who trust and believe in Jesus, death has lost its power and its sting. Death will not have the last word. Death will not have the last laugh. The last laugh and the final resounding word belong to God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask you to preserve and keep us this day also from all sin and evil, that in all our thoughts, words, and deeds we may serve and please you. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time together. May your day, and all the days of this Easter season, be filled with hope, faith, and love. Christ's love. Go with his blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.